Hello and welcome to Golf Legal. My name is Allie Golf. I'm the owner and founder, and I'm excited to have you here because we are talking about the trust administration process in California. What happens here in California is that oftentimes people don't have trust, they don't have estate plans, and their estates go through the process called probate. It is time consuming, expensive, and most people are not really thrilled about it. So here in California, one of the ways we avoid that awful and very public process is to create revocable trusts that turn irrevocable on the settler's death. I'm gonna go over a few key definitions and roles, and then we're gonna talk about really what happens from a high level perspective for the administration. So first, our people, the settler or the trustor, same, different words, same person, they are the creator. They have some stuff, a house, cash, investments, a business, whatever they have, and they want it to go to their family members or their beneficiaries when they're gone. Now they can name friends, family, charities. There's no requirement in California that you have to name a family member as a beneficiary, but the beneficiary is the person who inherits something that's a gift essentially, a gift on death. And then we have this middle person. They're called the trustee and they are the manager. They are the ones following the instructions from the settlor in order to give money to the beneficiaries. Now, what instructions are they following? That is literally the trust document. So when we go, what is the job of the trustee? We open up the trust, literally read it and go, okay, trustee, your job is one, two, three, four right? That is also supplemented with the probate code, which guides what trustees can and can't do, what their obligations are, who do they have to report to. So we smush all that together in our legal brains and we inform our trustees, this is what you need to do. So let's go through that a little bit because there's sometimes some confusion about revocable and irrevocable trusts. The trust I'm talking about right now is a revocable trust that was created during the settler's life that once they pass becomes irrevocable, meaning it cannot be changed, right? Revocable, they can make changes during their life, they can make amendments, they can replace terms, they can take assets in, take assets out, right? Will they literally have fun? Do whatever they need to, no obligations to anyone. The second they pass away, that trust becomes irrevocable and it cannot be changed. So the trustee, then will follow the instructions exactly as they're stated in the document. Now the trustee has a couple jobs. Their job is not just to go, thank you for that bank account and give it off to the beneficiary. They've got to go through a bit of a process. Now I will tell you the process is far better than the California probate process, but it is still a process nonetheless. So first, the first job of the trustee is to figure out what is their authority? What are they supposed to do? They're the trustee of this trust and we've got to figure out what assets they have control over. So we look at all the accounts, we look at all the real property, we look at the businesses and say, what is actually titled in the name of the trust? Those are the assets that the trustee has authority to control. What they will do is we call marshal. They'll marshal all the assets, like we're like scoop them up. Scoop up all the assets and they will hold them in a trust account with a tax ID number that is specific to this trust. So as soon as the settlor dies, we can't use their social security number anymore. Nope, IRS says you can't do that. So we get a new tax ID number and everything is transferred from the settlor's social security name number and their name into the name of their trustee as the manager now, instead of them as trustee, and into this new tax ID number. Consider it like a business, right? We create this business essentially that's only gonna last about a year, maybe less, maybe a little longer. Sometimes they can go on for a really long time, but let's pretend this one's short about a year. Take all the assets, put all the assets into the trust. Then before any distributions are made, we're going to make sure a couple things. One, that the family member gets a copy of the will and the trust and a notification that says you have 120 days to contest the terms of this trust. Once everybody doesn't contest it, we know that we can move forward with that document. The second thing they're going to need to do is assess, are there any debts of the decedent? that need to be paid, right? We've got to settle up all these debts before we can just hand off money to the beneficiaries. Why? Because the trustee is responsible for that. And if they decide to take the money and just simply distribute it to the beneficiaries, those creditors can come back at the, to the trustee personally 
and get reimbursement from the trustee, even if they gave away all the money. They might go back to the beneficiaries and say, I'm so sorry, I gave you too much, will you give it back? And the beneficiary goes, nope, I'm not going to do it. So mm, time out, right? Make sure you've paid the debts. Make sure the trustees paid the debts, any creditors, valid creditors. Then after that has been done, we know exactly what's in the, in the trust. There's a ledger of all of the assets, this bank account, these real estate properties, timeshares, personal property, if applicable, businesses, whatever. And then a report is sent to the beneficiaries that says, dear beneficiaries, here's everything I did, right? Here are the debts I paid. Here are the expenses I paid. Here's the process I went through to make sure that when I hand you your money, it is your money. No questions asked. Do what you want with it. And that report's called an accounting. Once we send out that accounting, they have 180 days generally, depending on the trust, to say, I don't like the accounting. Most beneficiaries sign off. Yeah, looks good. Thanks for the report. I appreciate that. Can I have my money now? Right? All the beneficiaries sign off. And then the trustee distributes to the beneficiaries exactly what they're supposed to get. Sometimes it's real estate. Sometimes it's brokerage accounts. Sometimes it's stocks. Again, this is all dictated by the trust that we opened and reviewed earlier. So we're following the trust the whole time. Usually there's a little holdback of money to make sure that the last taxes can be filed, any administrative fees can be handled, any transfer fees are dealt with, and then file a last tax return, right? A lot, please know that this is a little simplified for this process. There can be bumps in the road and sometimes the process doesn't end in a year. Sometimes it's shorter because everybody signed off and we didn't need to wait that long. Sometimes it can take years because people are fighting about the terms of the trust or what assets go in the trust. So while it's never necessarily the same, my general rule is the more the beneficiaries can get along, the faster it is and the less money the attorneys make. And that's honestly in the best interest of everyone, right? Most of us, the attorneys who are doing this, don't love the fighting. We'll do it. But honestly, y'all will end up with more money if you get along, communicate with each other openly, and know that this is a process that we have to go through. Some other jobs that the trustee has to take care of, they've got to make sure they've handled tax debt, like we said, expenses. They've got to notify agencies like Medi-Cal um, to make sure that there's no recovery from there. They've got to notify Social Security, any of these pensions. Like the trustee's got some stuff to do. The good news is for clients who work with our office, we walk them through that every step of the way. All right, step one, let's do this part. All right, now your job is one, two, three, four, five. We'll see in about a month, come back, We'll check in and go, how did those five tasks go? Perfect. Next step is the next five tasks. And then we show them, here's what you're doing. Here's what we're doing for you. And make sure that they get from the beginning, which is probably pretty scary, really emotional, kind of overwhelming to the end where they go, okay, I've done all the things I was supposed to do. I knew that I, what I was supposed to do. And now everyone's getting their money and hopefully they're pretty pleased. That's an exciting day, actually. We distribute money, which is really just sort of a wonderful legacy that people can leave to their family members. We love to be a part of that process. Like I said, it's always um, a little nicer for us when the people aren't fighting. It's a little more heartwarming. So just keep that in mind if you're going, should I fight on this? You have every right to call an attorney, but just know like when people get all the attorneys involved, there's a lot of money that goes out the window. And so we try and avoid that, at least with our office. So, so. That is our trust administration process from a very high level. Again, this is not legal advice. This is just the process that, that we go through in California. There's a bunch of deadlines, 30 days, 60 day, 120 day, 90 days. There's a bunch of different deadlines that trustees have to follow. They also have lots of duties. They have the duty not to commingle. They have a duty to diversify assets, to treat all the beneficiaries fairly, to um, invest prudently. I could go on, that's a whole other conversation, but like trustees have a pretty important job and it's really important that if you in particular are a trustee, uh, you are staying on top of your obligations. So if you have any questions, you can head to our website, gofflegal.com. We do have a resource that's priced less than an attorney that gives a sort of really basic list of the things that need to be done in an administration. It's many, many pages, so it's far longer and more comprehensive than this particular video. It's called our trustee manual. Um, and we also represent trustees. So if someone's going, that's not enough for me. I really would like some more support on this. Our office can handle that. So questions, golflegal.com. And I uh, wish you well on your trustee trust administration journey.